Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Isaac, and I am here at Second Baptist Church in Asbury Park with uh, one, one of my dear friends, uh, Pastor Samaj Van Zant, and he has been a real uh, special person in my life. Uh, this church right now, some of you might recognize it because uh, I've preached in here a couple times uh, for my, my favorite service, our Good Friday service yeah, that we get to have. That's great. And yeah, yeah, we're actually, we're sitting here and we're, we're actually getting ready to, uh, to go over to the, the protest that's, that's going right. to be taking place in Asbury Park about uh, what's been happening in, uh, in this city. Yeah. And uh, you were one of the first people that I thought of um, this past week when, uh, you know, we, we had what, what happened with Ahmad, uh, and then what happened with George. Yeah. And, you know, this was, this was really a time, I think, where a lot of people will remember where they were, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I went and did like a Facebook post, yeah. and I've always done that. Right. And I just felt, after I did that, like, really, that's it? <laughs> you know, that felt so just empty and like, no, I, I want, I need to do more. Yeah. I need to do more. And that's why I want to have you come and, and just have this conversation about race and about what's going on in, in our country, what's going on in our community, and right. um, just get an understanding from your perspective because you have such a great perspective, so much wisdom on this. Yeah. And uh, so thankful for you to be here. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. And um, I was excited you know when we had the phone conversation yeah uh, where you initiated this and uh and after our phone conversation i really thought to myself wow this is great right um and i'm like this is what needs to be happen happening and i really hope that this serves as a model uh for others to really to grab a hold to it um so that because if we're going to see an end to it it's going to be that there's genuine authentic conversation happening where there's um there's honest expressions yeah. of, um, of of states and status in, in life, yeah. and and then there's uh, listening, you know, ears uh, for understanding and not yeah. defensiveness. So and and I, it's not going to be perfect. You yeah. know, I may say something that's just stupid and yeah. ignorant, but I'm I just want to talk. I want to talk about this, and it's yeah. okay if you know we say something that's not right. We're talking. That's it. That's and it. that's the most important thing right now. That's right. Um, so I, I just want to kind of start and ask you, um, you know, I know how I felt yeah. this past week, um, but I wanted to ask you, how did you feel? You know, what, what were some of the emotions that, that you had to process through this past yeah. week? Yeah. So um, the first one was, was definitely anger. You know, it's like, oh, my gosh, another um, black man, you know, another uh, rogue uh, cop, another, um, you know, legal system that it, another opportunity for the legal system to be uh, just unfair and unjust um, in a murder. There's nothing else that you can call it but a murder. And so I had anger, yeah. um, um, and that anger was also exacerbated by exhaustion. So like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my gosh, because right. we just, we just we talk, getting we, over what, right. what happened We're talking about George Floyd. And, and getting running and, right. and I mean, the, the and father and son. And now right. it's, and then in between them, you got Breonna Taylor, Brianna, you yeah, know, and know. then right before that, you had a Tatiana Jefferson being shot through her window in her mm -hmm. own home, you know, by these Dallas cops who didn't announce themselves. And, um, and so really, you know, uh, there's anger, there's, uh, there's exhaustion. There's frustration, and the thing that I really, um, uh, and I said this yesterday in my sermon, right, is really uh, these feelings of concern, and, I'm, and, and because I'm a believer, I'm trying not to use, uh, I don't want to use, say that I'm fearful, yeah. but definitely every time I leave my house, right, <laughs> every time, uh, or just thinking about the future of the fact that I'm raising two uh, tremendously talented yeah. chocolate kids, right? <laughs> Talk, chocolate, uh, boys, and, they, and they're funny and they're energetic and, and they have a lot to offer the world. Um, and there's this, you know, this looming concern of will the world ever get to see all yeah. that God has placed in them because um, some immature, you know, uh, unprepared, um, uh, uh, insecure cop, <laughs> you know, yeah is it, it they encounter that on one day and uh so yeah but so i'm facing them trying to process all of that you know i'm trying to be cheerful 
you know, <laughs> but it, but I, but I'm angry, and 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 um, and I choose to sit in that anger. Yeah. So this was the first time I really had um, a serious conversation with my daughter. She's six. Yeah. And they want to know why I was so upset. Mm -hmm. And this was on Wednesday. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to be 100% honest with my daughter. Yeah. And she's a very emotional girl, very loving girl. And so I, I told her the story of George. Yeah. And I showed her a picture of what happened. And she started bursting out in tears, saying, that, yeah. how could that, that's a police officer. Right. That's a police officer. Right. How could a police officer do that? We're supposed to. And, and she just couldn't believe it. And, right. You know, I'm doing my best to try and explain to her that you know there, there's there's some there's good cops and then there's there's some some bad cops and mm -hmm. trying to you know explain that to a six year old is is it's not tough. easy <laughs> at, at all and and she kept saying but we're supposed to listen to them they're supposed to they're supposed to yeah and this is my six year old daughter who's who's white that right. will never have to deal with what you've had to deal with and still are and and your children like that's what I had to tell my six year old daughter what are some of the things that you have to tell your kids and talk to them about during the, these times and, and many others. Yeah, so one, I, we, you know, the six and nine, so we use the language that there are good cops <laughs> and bad cops, right? Um, and then, you know, um, I remember, so Carla and I, we try not to watch uh, the news while they're yeah. around. And, uh, but I thought my six year old went upstairs, but he actually sat on like the steps. Oh, wow. And so, <laughs> and, uh, and so he saw when they showed a clip of the video, and I heard the terror in his voice, right? At six years old, why the, why the policemen yeah. killing him? Yeah. You know, why are the policemen killing him? What did he do? And I, and I just sat there and I didn't do anything. And I turned around and said, Seth, we have to talk about this later because I wanted to, I, I don't know how to tell my six-year-old that they're killing him because he looks like you and me. That's, you know, that the, George was fully compliant. He did everything they asked him to do. I could not figure, I, and I still don't know how to tell my son that these cops killed that man because he looks like you and me do. I mean, what? Oh, my God. It, it, there's, there was... I just, I, I didn't know what, the, what else to do. Now, I'm still trying to find uh, the words to say that. And, you know, and so when I talk to my sons about policemen, um, I, you know, it's my nine-year-old is like, oh, yeah, he's reading the police cars, protect and serve. <laughs> yeah. And I want to say that that's true, but I can't say that, you know, but I, I say that that is what the police force is made for and what it's supposed to be but it's not true for every person wearing a uniform. So how, how did that happen? Like how, what is in a person to get them to be so hateful? Yeah. Based off of the color of somebody's skin. Yeah. You know, that, I, I, wh wh why is that? I think Where it, does that come from? It, it goes back generations, right? And it goes back generations to, um, there's this book uh, called White Fragility, which I definitely recommend um, for everybody to read. But um, in this book, it talks about how um, whiteness, as it is defined and understood around the world, is built on, um, is built on uh, you know, stealing and, and pillaging others, yeah. people's yeah. land, and you know, um, just this oppressive power um, you know, that, that this corruptive uh, power that has corrupted. And so that is in the lineage. And even when people don't do it overtly, yeah. it's still in them because they have not faced it. They yeah. have not allowed that to be revealed. To, for those of us who are believers, they haven't allowed the spirit to reveal that part of them um, uh, or they haven't been uh, willing to confront the history. Yeah. Um, I absolutely, so we've been watching uh, with this pandemic, I've seen way more Disney movies than I <laughs> <laughs> can't imagine. Um, but you would just but, watch the same one over and yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But um, so, you know, they released the movies out of the vault and yeah. uh, one was Pocahontas near the beginning, like way back in March. And I think it's John Smith or whatever the guy's name yep. is that came over. He nailed it. He nailed yeah, it. he had, uh, in this conversation with Pocahontas, 
he was saying, yeah, we're going to come over. And like in his moment of honesty, when he wasn't supposed to, he said, we're going to come over, take your land and make, and make you all and uh, give you all a better life. And po and it, you could tell how they really hit Pocahontas because she's like, I have a good life right now. <laughs> right, I have a good life. What's the yeah. matter with this, right? Yeah. And so it's always this. Yeah. Um, and so Be, being told this will be better for you. This is how it should be. That's right. Yeah. It's a narrowness of thing. It's a real narrow way of thinking, right? Toni Morrison calls it a psychosis, right? Uh, of um, where where you think that nothing else beside what you do and how you believe and how you live is better. Yeah. Um, or can be equally as important and valuable. Yeah. And so um, that's where, you know, really, uh, you know, it, it goes all the way back. Yeah. There's a uh, movie, Jackie Robinson. I don't know if you've seen that, 42. 42, oh, yeah. Yeah, 42. Oh, yeah, baseball player, yeah. right? Yeah, of course he watched it, right? <laughs> but um, there's a scene it's hard where... hard to watch some parts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And one hard scene for me was the scene where... Uh, this son was this white son and, and dad was there the game. and yep. the son exactly. was rooting for Jackie yep. Robinson and the dad, you know, he's like cheering him on and the dad turns him like that's the end. And it's like you can't. And so then the son begins to spew the same hate. And so it, it just comes from, you know, um, that uh, so many yeah. in so many ways, whiteness has been defined by an inferiority. Uh, 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 about superiority over something yeah. that is inferior. Yeah. And it's never we are valuable in ourselves. Yeah. It's always we're valuable because we're better. Yeah. And that's that's a dangerous place. And I mean, Christianity, where it's, where it's about lifting other people up. Absolutely. Not, Absolutely. Not holding them down. That's, what, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to hold us that's down. That's it. We as spirit-filled Christians, we want to push people up. I, it was so, I, I mean, just a, a picture-perfect example of what you just said when you hear the story of, of Admat and you have a father and a son yeah. in the truck right. with guns hunting this this young man who's jogging and yeah. you know it, mm. it makes you think where of, of course where do you think that that kid yeah. and I think it was the son who, who pulled the trigger right you know got that from from his father from his father and his father probably got it from his father yeah. and you know how can we you know what 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 can we do to, to break any of that I yeah I mean sometimes it it feels helpless that that was like I, I, I kind of go back to how like Lily felt. She just felt like helpless. Like how? What? What? what yeah. How can this happen? And, yeah. and I think that that's how some people may feel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, is it hopeless? No, how I don't do, think it's hopeless. What? What and, can we um, do? What? What can? Yeah. What can I do? What? What can we do together to to make some sort of change so yeah. that my grandkids don't ever have to see. A yeah. George Floyd video. Yeah. When they're so I think it age. I think it's uh it's about one um uh empathizing, right? Um think there there has to be some introspective, um introspection rather of self and then also the biggest thing is is we have to hear, see and accept the truth for the truth. Yeah. So I yeah. think we have to go back in our history and we have to have the truth taught, yeah. right? So even in our schools, when I was in Oklahoma, one of the biggest things I was fighting against and uh, cause and loss was that they took slavery out of the uh, curriculum and out of the textbooks. They would not approve or allow any books in the wow. Oklahoma school system wow. that taught on slavery as though that was some great period. But, you know, that, that time was then like, oh, this is the time where America, you know, really became prosperous. And, and so, I mean, you're teaching, you're ingraining it from these little, you know, little kids to, oh, yeah, the slavery was really about America becoming prosperous and about money when really it was about, you know, chattel slavery, it was about inhumanity, it was about dehumanizing and de degradating other people. It was about presenting to them a false picture of Jesus. Yeah. Right, this yeah. false Jesus. I, know. I we don't were know. Talking about that the right, day. the <laughs> blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. Yeah, it's like Jesus does <laughs> not look like Fabio, right? <laughs> so, oh my God. Yeah, so I think that but we, I, I, you know, you, you read those. I saw those books growing up. Like, oh, there's Jesus, Me blonde too. hair, blue eyes, white sash yeah. coming out of the, you know, right. the river, right? <laughs> right. Dove on his shoulder. <laughs> hey, manicure, pedicure. Yeah. It's like, who is this Jesus, right? right? Yeah, but it, um, it started. I mean, it, it's little things like that that absolutely. just make people see what is 
you know, um, a cookie cutter about what this is how it's supposed to be. That's it. That's it. And, so and we have it, to teach. It starts young. Yeah, it has, yeah. It has to change. It has to be taught. has to be, we have to accept the truth about our own lineage. lineage. Yeah. Another, I'm bringing up these movies because we've been watching them, right? Uh, watching Frozen 2. That movie is yeah. profound. Yeah. I don't, I'm like, I'm trying to find out who wrote, who, where's the script come from because it is so profound. Right, where um, Anna, I think, right? Yep. She's the older see your, sister. Let's see how good you know it. Yeah, I know I, it pretty good. I, I watched it. Okay, yeah, I've seen it. You know, when I'm there, I'm like yeah. with the computer <laughs> in and out. But I think it's Anna, right? The the oldest one where the spirit was calling her, right? Yeah. The, ah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, the Elsa, Elsa. Oh, Elsa, heard it. Yeah. Elsa. Okay, yeah. it's Elsa. So Edit that Anna part. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the kids at home are very upset at you, right? Right, now. I know. It's like, darn it, Dad, it's Elsa. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> But yeah, where Elsa, you know, the spirit is calling yeah. her, right? And Elsa finds out this truth, yeah. right? She fall, and 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 here's the thing: they, the imagery of it is so important. They show her falling to find the truth, mm -hmm. right? And really, that's what you know. When we talk about what can we do to help, we have to strip away the white privilege yeah. and of I don't have to be concerned about it. Yeah. And we have to, you know, really come down to the to the to the basis of it and really find out the truth of who our ancestors were and who our yeah. people were and where we and come face from. Face it. Face it. And recognize it That's and turn it. from it and change your mind. And, That's it. And, you know, I, I, I hear it so often, um, you know, because I'm we're, we're like the same age. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm always mad at you because you, you're younger than me. <laughs> I'm like months right now. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever had it, you know, someone from like a previous generation and they'll, you know, they'll say, man, things were so great back then. You know, families ate at home and we yeah. were respectful and all this stuff. And nowadays, you know, sagging their pants. I, I don't yeah, know. I, I'm, yeah. Maybe I'm but messing it holes up. Holes in the like, jeans, you know. Yeah, right yeah, you know, these crazy <laughs> bastards. You know? right. But I think like, yeah, the, the 50s and 60s, those were great times. Everyone was so perfect. They yes. had everything like, I, are you kidding it's me? like, say what? Like, Man, that wow. is this whole but MAGA that, movement. That is a mindset of, you know, I, I, what, what, how I was raised was right. Right. And they never right. faced the That's real right. issues of your generation, and yeah. you're just going to repeat them. You're just going to pass them down. That's it. And that's what a lot of people have done. Yeah. Cause it, yeah. Go ahead. Here's the truth. It's hard to say my dead grandfather was wrong. Yeah. Because dead grandfather, you know, we, we, we pay homage to him. You know, we got pictures of him. You know, we this land, our wealth, our, yeah. you know, whatever comes because of what great-grandfather did. But we're not going to say what great-grandfather did. We're just going to enjoy this yeah. privilege that we yeah. have now. Yeah. Right? And so it's hard when somebody's been placed as this, you know, example and this model of, mm -hmm. of humanity to now mm -hmm. say that, yeah, great-grandfather was wrong. And I think we have to learn to be able to separate that um, separate the people from their actions. Yeah. And, to be, you know, in and, and Christianity, we say separate the, the sinner from the sin, right? To be able to, to realize that, that there is something in them that, that they may have been good aspects of them, but there were also some bad aspects yeah. of them. Yeah. And that nobody is all good and yeah. nobody is all bad. Yeah. And we have to be able to parse that out to say, how do we cherish the good yeah. and how do we accept the bad and still continue, you know, to continue to go uh, to, to do something differently? Well, one thing that always, um, you, you know, will, will come up is uh, um, you got to wait for all the facts. Uh, Don't you yeah. hate that? I really do. And, and I, I, really I remember uh, there was somebody, I think it was it was right on tu Tuesday, I, you know, I saw what happened. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm enraged. Um, you know, I immediately, um, you know, write, write about this. And I got some joker, you know, come on there. Oh, you got to wait for the facts. And, but but, but there's, there's a root in that, isn't it? Absolutely. Where Absolutely. There's always, there, there's got to be a justification. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, have you found that or, you know. Absolutely. What is, how does that make you feel, you know, those people yeah. and those comments out there? Outraged. Yeah. Because here's the thing. They have always, the, it goes back to imagery, right? When Trayvon Martin was uh, was slain, uh, most likely by George Zimmerman, yeah. right? The while they waited on all the facts, supposedly yeah. they were putting out these pictures of Trayvon Martin that oh, yeah. showed him in an unlikely way. Yeah. And then you had when Dylan Roof shot up these black people in uh, in Charleston, North Carolina, South Carolina, they come, they finding him, you know, in, in tuxedo and suit, 
and and even the way that they refer to him on news, right? Yeah. Uh, black folk are referred on the news as thugs and and as thieves and criminals. White folk they could blow up the you know blow up a whole building in Oklahoma City, and it's like, well, this citizen. Yeah. It's like also oh, he's you know and and yeah. it's like no that is a terrorist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so um, you know it, it does it is outrageous that people want to wait on the facts when it's trying to justify the actions of white people. Yeah. You know, but they don't need any facts. They don't need any time, right? They they don't need any type of, you know, uh, conclusive evidence to make a judgment about people of color, black and brown people. And it is it is um it, it enrages me, it, it frustrates me, and the thing that really gets me is that people have yet to see the hypocrisy in it. Yeah. It's like you you don't see the hypocrisy in this yeah. yet. Yeah. And I mean that, it, it, and so it's like, it's like you can't be. It, I just want to believe that people are not that small-minded. I know, right? Pe pe I mean, I, it almost seems like in today's culture, with a lot of people, and I, I, I do my best to, to not allow myself to be swayed by it. But people don't think independently. No, they mm -hmm. wait to see which way their party goes. That's right. And then they pick up those talking points, and they never actually just look at something. That's right. Look at the, the facts and make their own decision about what actually happened. Yeah. And and we fall into that. I mean, I, I, I could have to watch myself. Like, yeah. is this really what happened? I, I need to do my own research and figure out exactly what happened. Right. But I think a lot of people just, just go with the party. That's just it. Just go with whatever the party says. That's and, it. And here, here we are divided. You know, here yeah. we are fighting the same battles we were. You know, I, I sent Absolutely. you a, a text. 1991 w w was the, the Rodney King Rodney video. King. And here we are. The, the same exact type of thing is happening. Like, That's has it. it gotten better? Or has it gotten different, right? It's, or is it exactly the same? That right? It has gotten different and the same, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Just viewed in Just, a different way, man. Right. Yeah. That's right. And, and the actions, uh, Michelle Alexander um, uh, has a wonderful book, The New Jim Crow, yeah. right, where she talks about how um, racism and, and slavery has continued in America. It has just changed the way that it is uh, executed. So before, you know, it went from chattel slavery to Jim Crow, uh, to segregation, to now mass incarceration, and now you know we're seeing all of all what's happening on film, yeah. and all of those things are a form of slavery because part of you know this cop kneeling on George's neck in the middle of a sea of black folk, right, and this crowd is really this. I need to show you who's in power, right? I need yep. to prove. I'm proving my humanity and my yep. superiority by snuffing out the life of this, of this one. And you could just see, um, you know, for those of us who are spiritual, there is just demonic, you know, countenance yeah. on the cop's face um, when he's doing it. Like, yeah, this is because he's been taught, and a lot of people have been taught to define themselves <laughs> according yeah. to court again yeah. to somebody being better and somebody being worse. What about the officers that sit there? Oh, they are just as complicit. They are just as guilty, and and why and why why did they just stand there? Were they because just as racist as the dude with the with the foot on the neck, or were they just you know spineless? Like, wait, what, what are your thoughts? On I think that? all of I think they're racist. I think they're spineless. I think in some ways, some of them were thinking, I you know I want to go home, and if you know if we don't, yeah, I want to go home for whatever reasons yeah. they could have uh, conjectured in their mind. And then also um, just this heinous blue coat of silence, yeah. a blue wall of silence, however you refer to it, that I cannot tell another cop what to do, not in public, not in private, not when they're doing anything wrong in any place that I cannot tell another cop what to do without serious repercussions on my end. And I know that there's places in, in police forces where cops who have spoken up against other cops, though the ones who spoke up have gotten reprimanded and suspended and fired, ostracized, and ostracized, made fun, whatever. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, um, uh, there was just a recent case I was reading where you know the a cop in um, in the all white, predominantly white community, black cop, was put on like park duty because the wealthy white women were saying that they didn't like this black guy and they kept making all these IA reports and all of them were proven false, 
But, you know, because <laughs> they just, it's like black people can't be cops because we don't want them to have any type of authority because God forbid a black man, you know, black woman has authority over yeah. somebody who's white, which I don't know why that matters. Yeah. But, you know, God forbid, yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, just just a dynamic. And because I, I, I don't want to think outside of that and my group or my party, or my, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is has it doesn't have any thoughts toward that. I just have to reject it. Yeah. I, I remember when I was I was 19 and um, I told you how I grew up. You know, with my father and, yeah. and just I, I never really saw any racism. I didn't or, or wasn't aware of it. Yeah. And I remember I, I went to school in Baltimore, and my freshman year there, I went over um, my uh, my friend's house to watch the Super Bowl. I'll never forget. Uh, it was the uh, um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. And we're over there, and his father, every other word out of his mouth is the N word. My goodness. And I'm 19 years old. I'm I'm so uncomfortable, yeah. and I didn't say one thing. Yeah. And that was a big moment for me because that was like a moment where I, 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 I felt terrible about myself. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've tried to, from that moment, to always, if I ever hear anything, if I ever see anything, even if it's someone I, I know, even if it's someone I, I respect that's older, that's right. an elder, to always say something. Yeah. And I've done my best with, with that. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, that happened for me when I was 19. You know, maybe for other people it happens when they're a little bit older, they have that awakening or that mm -hmm. the Lord can grip them in a moment. But, right. you know, I've, I've found that, and maybe, you know, maybe you can help me out here, you know, the, the three cops that are just standing around there, um, you know, kind of represent so many people that just, you know, stay silent on these issues. Right. You know, right. Um, you know we were talking about pastors. And, right. you know, some of the reasons why pastors won't speak out is because they're afraid uh, to lose some people Absolutely. in their church or offending Absolutely. some people that, you know, give big to their, their church or something. Right, right. And, you know, that, that I, I, I pray, I pray can be an awakening for every white pastor out there. Yeah, To yeah. not allow any of, of that pressure to stop them from speaking the truth. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, really, we... You know, um, we cannot, I don't, I don't think, and I mentioned this yesterday in the sermon, right, that, that the Jesus we serve and claim from scriptures would have spoken up. Yeah. You know, Jesus would, he would have not been afraid to not be in the temple, yeah. right, or the building as we would call it now, yeah. but Jesus would have spoken up and said that this is just wrong, and Jesus would have um, made some waves about it and would have been ready to sacrifice whatever needed to be sacrificed for it. And so some of it, too, you know, I think is for white pastors is that they have yet to wrestle with their own white privilege, right, and to realize yeah. that I, too, have privilege um, because it's a privilege not to have yeah. to say anything. Yeah. I don't, I don't, there is, I cannot not say something, right, you know, that, <laughs> that is just not mine. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I was to come in, uh, you know. Um, Man, that is that is so good what you just said. Yeah, and because I cannot not be black, you and know. I wonder, <laughs> is, is that because um, everyone in their church votes the same, thinks the same, talks the same, looks the same? Yeah. That they really don't need to address these issues because they feel like it doesn't concern them. Right. And and this 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 thought of I'm not racist because I got three black friends. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like oh he's the pastor's not talking to me. You yeah. know that type of thing. But we really have to. I mean, and not just not just um, uh, Jesus, but I believe many of the prophets would have spoken up. Yeah. Right. And the other reality is that if um, I don't I don't think that we would have as many uh, Christians, uh, white folk who are Christians, if they knew. Um, the actual color of some of these biblical heroes. And she, <laughs> heroes we were, and she we were talking about that the other night. That's right. I, I know. And we, you know, Mo Most Moses them, married a black woman. He sure did. You know, did Solomon and, and Solomon. Bathsheba. Absolutely <laughs> right. Uh, Esther, Queen yeah, Esther, yeah, right? I, you know, know, we got right now, um, uh, uh, what's that, Sight and Sound Theater, yeah. right before COVID-19. They were playing Esther. And Esther played by white. Well, Esther was not white, right? <laughs> you know, it's like these people I, were in yeah. Africa. They were yeah. in, you know, all of them. Um, they were in the Middle East, yeah. right? They, they're no, you can go there now. <laughs> there are no native people from that area yeah. that, that, that uh, you know, have white skin. And so 
Um, you know, I think there will be so many people who will reject Christianity, unfortunately, yeah. um, because they would realize that Jesus wasn't white. You know, a lot of the apostles weren't white. It is like we want to espouse these people as great, you know, great in our minds. But then you look at the imagery and the books and the Bibles and, yeah. you know, and the iconography and stuff like that. Um, but the closer you get to their time, uh, to the time of Jesus and the prophets, the darker the images are, you know, and as you get yeah. closer, um, you know, and as it's the world begins to westernize, so they get lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one thing that um, I'm, I'm trying to do right now, yeah. um, and I, I pray I'm doing a good job because I, I know that looking myself in the mirror and, and asking myself, is there anything in me? Mm -hmm. Is there anything in me? Is there yeah. any prejudice in me? Is there any, what, what is in me? Search my heart, God. Yeah is one of the things that my wife and I have really been seeking the Lord the last week yeah. and being humble about it yeah. and being honest about it. Uh, because I, I think, like, like you said, so many people, you know, just say, oh, oh that's not me. That's yeah. But yeah. I pray that that could be one of the things that every white pastor, every person who uh, um, is uh, a white person will look at themselves in the yeah. mirror and say, you know, what, what is in me? Do I look down at people? Do I look at someone differently? Have I made decisions that I need to repent of? And really search their own hearts Absolutely. and speak up. Absolutely. And, you know, have conversations like this that are uncomfortable. Like, yeah. you know, we've, we've had many conversations about, about race, but, you know, this is, this is a little un uncomfortable at times. Absolutely. And that's good. That's yeah. a good thing. That, that means we're, we're getting somewhere. We're making Absolutely. some progress. That's right. There's no progress without that. And I'm just thinking about the pastors, even be mindful of the, you know, what the, the curriculum that they're yeah. teaching has. Yeah. Right, because all curriculum is not equal. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, just be mindful of the images and things of that nature. So I think, and um, and and you know, and just and speaking up and yeah. and helping people understand, because I think it's great to say search me, but helping them understand, yeah. you know, what is okay now that what do, what do I do with this? Yeah, and helping them to grieve the loss of you know this um, this superhero perfect picture of my ancestors, right? Um, and, and helping them also to realize that all that God fashioned and formed every human being, yeah. right? The first model of a man and a woman was, uh, was African, yep. right? Yep. And, and we all, right? that's right. Yep. That's yep. Exactly. Right. So we Dark skin all, man, that's Adam. That's, right. that's our history. That's yep. it. And we've all come from that, yeah. you know, and realize that that, that that is in our lineage and we have to respect that. And um, and then also to correcting as you as you said you do and and I pray more people do correcting in public and in private. Yeah. You know, doing that same uh, being and being an ally. Even right? if it's an elder. Absolutely. Even if, even if it's someone with with a, that, that's maybe even more of a reason why we need to do it. Yeah. Uh, because they have influence and and I think a lot of times like like I was you know 19 year old kid I'm in this guy's house you know I felt uncomfortable. Right. And I think that so, sometimes. People stay quiet because it's it's too uncomfortable. They're yeah. putting themselves at risk. Right, and, right. And, and then it just continues, and then right. it just continues, and, and here we are. Yeah, uh, but look how much more we're losing. Yeah. Right, you're yeah. trying to save your individual self, but we lose so much more. I mean, look yeah. at what's happening now across our country and what yeah. has happened. And, um, and you know, I quoted my pastor uh, yesterday that who says that those who are either racist or, or complicit, you know, are not living full lives. Yeah. You, you rob yourself of living the fullness of the life that God would want us to live yeah. that is available to you when you have to begin, yeah. you know, making somebody marginalized, you know, condemning somebody else, the stress of trying to remain superior, yeah. right, instead yeah. of seeing the value in everybody. Yeah. Um, it, becomes, it becomes you lose so much more. Right, then, then oh, we can gain. Un unhappy when other people succeed. Absolutely. It's, it's a sad way to live. Right, because we saw a lot of this come out, right, a lot of the backlash when President Obama got elected. I know. And that just blew people's minds. Because, like, wait a minute. Black people are not supposed to be successful. They're not supposed to ascend to these ranks. They're not supposed to have functional families. Black men are not supposed to have one baby mama. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, it's yeah. like yeah. what and are here, we here's doing? A, here's a man who... You know, married to the same woman, yeah. an incredible father, 
And people never wanted to and talk about brilliant. that, never wanted to talk about that yeah. and realize what a great example right. for someone in the black community, for any community. For any community, yeah. right? And, you know, um, and, and it's just, and it's so hard. And yeah. I would just really wish that people would really, you know, yeah. figure out how, how is it that um, I can, or why is it, answering that question, why is it that I feel that way about somebody else? Yeah. And then allowing... Um, being humble about yeah, it. How did that get in there? Yeah. Like, where did that come where from? Where did it you come know? from? And I think sometimes even you, you say things and you're like, that's not right. Where did that come from? Yeah. And just, okay, I need to address that. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're going to uh, this, this protest tonight. Yeah. Uh, I was really disappointed that you were not asked uh, to speak tonight yeah. <laughs> because I, I know that this city really um, needs to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, needs to hear from a pastor, an African-American pastor here, right here in the city, lives here. Yeah. Um, what, what would you want to say tonight um, to, uh, you know, I don't know how many people are going to be out there, yeah. but what would be your message? Whoever's there, I definitely uh, think that we have to, that we have to re recognize that the system as it is is not working. Yeah. And we have to fight and stand together uh, for reform. So one, I would say stand, let's stand together Right. Let's fight together toward an end um, and let's do it peacefully. Yeah. Right. We, we have to do it peacefully. And and here's the thing. I think, you know, we had King and Malcolm X and then, of course, you know, Stokely Carmichael was up in that mix, too. Right. We had these leaders then um, and it got us to where we are. Um, and I think they did. They played their role. And now it's time for us to play yeah. our role. And you need people at the table and you also need some people you know, rabble rousing, yep. um, but in a way that is done um, so that we don't have to injure and harm um, ourselves or, or, or tear everything down. Yeah. You know, we need to be tearing down ideologies, not buildings, yeah. right? We have to tear down thought patterns and policies and procedures um, and, and not, but we don't, but that won't happen yeah. by tearing down structures, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um, I definitely want us to say that we have to do, and to say that this cannot be a one time, you know, oh yeah, know. black person gets shot, murdered, we, we on it a couple of days and then we're off That's of why, it. You know, it, yeah. it needs to be more than a social media post. Absolutely. From everybody. Has to be. And I'm sure that you appreciate that, but it, it needs yeah. to be much more than, Absolutely. you know. Write like letters to yeah. your officials, you know, who can change the laws. Yeah. Let the DA know, let the police chief know, let the prosecutor you know, know that you are not satisfied with this type of behavior and something has to be done yeah. differently, yeah. right? Vote with yeah. us. Vote yeah. in, in for politicians who um, are not, uh, who have the whole community's yeah. best interests at heart and then hold them accountable, yeah. right? Uh, do what they said they did when they were getting elected. That's yeah, right, absolutely. that's right. And those who are friends yeah. with lawyers and judges yeah. You know, hold them accountable, right? Say, listen, I understand, you know, uh, so that we don't, uh, you know, or just even asking them questions. Hey, are you, you know, are you checking yourself? How many, you know, did you accuse somebody or, or sentence somebody just because of their skin yeah. color, right? Yeah. And, uh, and we look at even, um, you know, where this, of course, this incident with George Floyd, right? Then you have the other incident where this black cop shot this white woman. <laughs> And yeah. I mean, immediately, I would be oh, yeah. within 30 minutes, yeah. he was fired and sent yeah. and and, and, uh, and uh, accused, right, and arrested in 30 minutes. Yeah. And he, we had to fight three days and five days. And it's like, come on. I, I know. I know. And uh, so, yeah, we have to be able to use our the voice and exercise our agency to speak against the systemic evils and and and, um, and of oppression um, and, and more within our society, right? And if you, whatever... If you're a banker, make you know, uh, or if you work in the financial industry, asking, are we giving loans to the same yeah. rates to minorities as we are to those, you know, who are white, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, um, I think there are ways that we can begin to root it out in every aspect uh, where we are. Um, but we have to stand together. We have to vote together. We have to hold the people who we put in leadership to change policies and things. We have to do that uh, together, right? Um, it won't work. So another way, I I want to have you um, just as we close. Um, if if you could pray for Shore Christian Church, yeah. Uh, if if you could pray for our city, yeah. Because this is your city, this is my city Absolutely. that God's called us to in Asbury Park, yeah. 
and it's it's we're we're, we're okay, but we're not where we should be. That's There's right. There's so much more work that needs to be done. Yeah. And uh, I'm so thankful that you're here and I'm here yeah, and we're doing this. Absolutely. And I I pray that this is just the start of of something and. Uh, when we, this gets back to normal, we got to have you come in and preach at our church. We love it. We love and, it. And uh, they get to hear from you. Yeah. Um, and so if you could just close this, Pastor. Absolutely. And let me just say thank you, you know, for having this conversation, for being open and willing to do so, um, and then to share it with your congregation, right? And I really think um, that uh, through prayer and through the emboldening of the Holy Spirit that uh, we'll begin to punch holes in the darkness that exists. And, uh, and make a difference. Thank and so it's so start to a great thing. Thank you, Pastor. Absolutely. Thank Let us so pray. Gracious and all wise and loving God, we thank you uh, because you first loved us. Yes. God, we thank you for the opportunity to speak. God, we thank you for uh, the ability to have a model in our Savior, Jesus, to understand what it means to speak truth to power, to understand what it means uh, to self-sacrificially yes. uh, act and to move on behalf of others and on behalf of you. So, God, I pray for yes. uh, Sure Christian Church, and I ask, oh, God, that for the church as a whole, that you help them uh, under the lead of Pastor Isaac to move in directions, oh, God, that would help uh, to dismantle racism, that yes. would help to dismantle any type of segregation and hate that exists for means that are, um, are, are so shallow as skin color. Yes. And then, God, I pray uh, for each individual, that, Lord, as they begin to ask the questions of where did this come from yes. and how did I get here, God, I pray that you would allow your spirit to give them uh, both uh, cutting and healing at the same time. Yes. For, God, we know your word is powerful and does just that. Yes. And then, God, I pray that you, uh, for Asbury Park, Lord, I ask that this city, oh, God, that it be a vessel of your peace, yes. that, God, that this city be a place where um, we can continue to be examples of how uh, we can all uh, get along and respect each other and value one another for what you and who you have designed Thank us to be. Jesus. Help us, O oh God, all to see each other as your creation, you, fearfully and wonderfully you, made. Jesus. Now, God, I pray for this rally, yes. even on this evening. God, I pray that you will quell every antagonistic spirit. I pray, O oh God, that you will give resistance um, to, every, uh, to every inflammatory uh, speech or suggestion. And I pray that as we come together, that we will find unity in our diversity, you, that we yes, will learn yes. um, to love each other and to love with each other and um, to treat each other as we would want to be treated. Yes. Father. So God, we thank you right now. And I pray for my friend Isaac as he continues to have this conversation. Lord, I pray that you would protect him and keep him from anyone who would want to speak up against him. For surely, oh God, we believe that this is of you and God, I pray for his yes. family, yes. and I ask, O oh Lord, that you will continue uh, to shower your blessings um, in ways that uh, only you can get the credit. So, God, we thank you right now and pray that your dream for our lives will come yes, true. Father. And we are so grateful for thank what you're going to do in the mighty and matchless name of yes. Jesus, yes, who Father. keeps us strong, yes. who helps us to hold our head high, who uh, knows um, and will help us to process the anger we feel, God, and, uh, and give us hope even in seasons of hopelessness. God, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. This was great, man. Love you. This was great. Love you, too. Hope you enjoyed that interview with myself and Pastor Samaj. And I know that there's a lot of topics we didn't have a chance to get to. Uh, but right now, we're going to be continuing that conversation, myself and our worship director, Nicole Tillman. We're going to be doing another Facebook Live. And in the comments section, uh, they're going to put the link where you could get on that Facebook Live. And we're going to continue this conversation on race and racism in America. And we're also going to have an opportunity. If you have any questions uh, that you want to give us, if you want to hear any topics discussed, uh, you'll have that opportunity. So uh, go over there now and let's continue this conversation.